degrees, rotations, or time. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Miss Hino's Lego Robotics. So today we're going to answer the question, what's better, time, rotations, or degrees? And for those of you that are experts already, this really isn't a debate because you're already going to use what you're comfortable using. But for those of you that are just getting started, you might be wondering, hey, why are there three choices and is one better than the other? So this video is not going to try to persuade you to move to one or the other. It's just going to give you some of the benefits of some of your options. So let's take a look. You know, Lego Robotics. Okay guys, so let's start off with rotations. So when you're doing a forward or any kind of turn, backwards, whatever maneuver you're making with this robot, a rotation would be just, you know, if we're starting up here, a rotation would just be one revolution of the tire. So when you're thinking about rotations, you're just thinking, how many times do I want the tire to spin or turn? And when we're talking about degrees, we're talking then about how many degrees do I want the wheel to turn? You got to be careful on this one here, though, because a lot of people think, hey, if I do a 90 de degree turn, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be straight 90 degrees. And that's not the case. The 90 degrees is going to be how many degrees will that tire rotate? And then we have time. And that one's easy. It's just how many seconds do we want those tires rotating? So now let's go ahead and go to the table with the robot and figure out how each one of these interacts with the other and where your possible benefits might come. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with the easiest one first, and that's going to be time. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't use time a lot, and there's several reasons. The first one is um, I'll only, only use time if I'm in a hurry, um, if I need something done fast. If I'm going to do a quick brick program, I'll use time. The reason why I don't use time a lot is because it's, it's a very wild and random guess for time. Unless you use time so much that you're able to just know how far a distance you need to go with time, um, I'll usually try to stay away from it though. Uh, but this one's pretty easy. For those of you that are just getting started though, if you're going to use time, um, this is a brick program where it's going to have the robot going forward for two seconds. So if you know how far, you know, two seconds might be, time is okay. Um, for those of you that are doing first Lego League, um, that's something I would stay away from. But again, it's, it's a matter of choice. And once you pick it and you're getting really good at it, definitely stick with it. Stick with what works. But for time, um, I just use it again just to see if something's working. I'll just, you know, to test out, hey, both motors are running. But when I'm trying to do a first Lego League mission, if I'm trying to do something very specific where I need to stop at a certain point, I will definitely use degrees and sometimes rotations. So let's go ahead and go to rotations. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and cover the area of rotations now. So I'm ha I have a regular EV3 tire here, and I'm going to go ahead and just measure this tire's diameter because what I'm going to use is the circumference formula here just to figure out what would a rotation be as far as distance? So if you can see, this tire is perfectly two inches in diameter. So if you guys know your circumference, it's going to be twice the radius times pi. So right now, um, if there's a diameter of two, we're now going to just multiply that times pi. Okay, so everybody, if we take pi, which is 3.14, and multiply that by our diameter, we end up getting 6.28. So basically this robot should travel 6.28 inches for every rotation. So let's go ahead and prove that. Okay everybody, so there it is. I have my forward 50% motor speed for that one rotation. So let's go ahead and see how far that really goes. Okay everybody, let me tell you what I did. I put this paper down and I drew a line here at 6.25. So I just did six and one fourth inches. If you don't believe me, there is the evidence. So again, we're looking at um, 6.28 inches. So this robot, if we start it right here, looking right at that paper, it should, pr it can, it should come really close to this line here. And that's one rotation or 6.28 inches. So let's check that out. 
And look how close that got. I mean, that's, that's pretty much on it. And if it went a little bit past, that's fine because I drew that line at 6.25 inches. So again, one rotation would be roughly 6.28 inches. So, you know, wherever you're going, you know, if you're doing a first Lego League mission, you know, you can measure that out. You know, if you're having to go 12, you know, point something inches, you can put that on for two rotations. So it's a useful, measurable uh, way to go here or an option for your distance. Um, but I really like degrees. So let's go to the degrees. Okay, so the last option here is degrees. And the reason why I like degrees is, to me, it's the most accurate, quickest way to measure out any kind of distance. So what I do here is I come to port view here on the third tab. And I'll just go up. And what's going to it allow me to do, it's going to allow me to see how many degrees my BNC motor actually run here. So if I'm going to start here at the edge of this paper, and I want to get to this edge here, I'm just going to take my robot here. I'm going to make sure I roll this, but I don't let the wheels slip here. And I'm just going to, with my hand, move this up here. And I want it to stop right there. And then all I do is I take a look at my degrees, the 562, sorry if that's out of focus. And so what I'm going to do now is just go to my computer and put in 562 degrees, and my robot should stop at the same point. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm back on my computer here. So instead of the rotations, I'm just going to put this now on for degrees. And then I'll change that to the 562, like so. And then I'll just go ahead and download this, and let's see how close to the edge of that paper we can get. Okay, everybody, I put the 562 degrees on this robot, and what we're hoping is when I start this program, it will go to the edge like it did when I pushed it over there. So let's check that out. And pretty close. I mean, you know, it's never going to be exactly perfect. You might have to add or subtract some degrees, but you're going to always be in the ballpark. It's going to be better than, you know, having to make a ton of guesses, you know, really wild guesses uh, too high, too low. Um, when you do the degrees strategy here, you're always going to be in the ballpark, um, pretty close to where your robot moved it. You have to be careful when you roll it not to let the wheel slip because if it does slip, it will give you um, an untrue reading. But um, if you do it right, you should be close. And um, in my opinion, it's better than uh, rotations and time. But again, I'm not trying to sway you away from it. I'm trying to sway you to just being comfortable with one of them. Because once you get you know, your mind wrapped around one, it's really going to be your, your habit. It's, you're going to become a better guesser at distance or time. So, you know, definitely use the one that works for you and the one that you find that you're most successful with. Okay, guys. So as we wrap up this conversation about rotation degrees or time, um, I want you to feel comfortable choosing your own and not worrying about what other people think. The beauty about my class is I have students that use all three and they feel comfortable using all three. Like Johnny uses time, Susie uses degrees, and they all feel very comfortable and confident, that's the key, with what they're using. They just become attached to it. They just become used to it, and they just get really good at it. So I want you to feel comfortable that if you pick one of those and just dedicate yourself to practicing it and becoming really good at it, it's really not gonna matter which one you pick. Um, I just gave you my opinion in today's video, but ultimately I want you to own whatever decision you make because that's the one that you're going to choose to go with and choose to, you know, do all of your robot programming with. Um, what I encourage you to mix it up, mm, you know what, you can always try to mix it up and, you know, try to get good at all three, but ultimately I really would like, love for you guys to just pick one and get really good at that one. But feel free to experiment and just kind of know, hey, I like this one, I really don't like this one. And you know, get to the point where it's kind of like your favorite soda. You know, you always kind of pick it and you just enjoy it. And how did that revolve to food? Anyway, 
Um, just enjoy what you pick and just enjoy the learning and the fun, okay? All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's uh, video. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where some people get confused and they ask me, hey, Mr. You know, which one's better? And I gave you my opinion, but I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys like and why. So you can kind of give other viewers uh, your point of view. Okay, guys, I am Mr. Hino for Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay guys, take care.